Hey everyone, it's Joe and Isaiah from The Automator. And have you ever had a hot string or a hot key or just tried to do a mouse click on a window and for whatever reason you couldn't interact with it with auto hotkey? That's what we're gonna show you today. We're gonna explain the problem, you know, what typically happened and what's going on, why do you, we're gonna give you a tool, which is really cool, this admin URL over me here. That's the tool that you can download to make it easier to identify if this is the problem. And then we're gonna give you some sample code that you can add to your script to help get around it. Exactly. So let me first demonstrate uh, something that happens very often and you might not see what the problem is right away. So here I'm running Notepad two times. One of them is running as a normal user and the other one is running as an admin. So uh, if you, at least you have the title there to guide you that that's what's going on, but usually what happens is that you don't know. So you run a program and you have no way to know quickly what is running as, and then what happens is you start doing this. You have, for example, a script, you have some hot strings or hot key, and they're just gonna send text. In this instance, I run it. If I do here on a normal notepad window, you would get your thing, control T would set, send the text normally. But if I try to do the same up here, nothing is gonna happen. Like it, it, the hot string is not gonna work. And control T will also not do anything. So basically, this is uh, the symptom of the problem. The problem usually is there might be other things, right? But one of the most common things that is going on is that the program is being run as administrator for whatever reason. We had an issue recently with a with a software <laughs> that we were trying to interact with, and we didn't know that it was being run as admin. And after a little bit of while, we kind of like figured it out. So we decided to develop this little script. What it does is um, it will ask you to be run as administrator because it has to be administrator to check on this. But it will list only the files that are being run as administrator. And you can see that there's a few services out there for different programs that they are being run as admin. Now, here's the, let me do this. Let me close this off. Now, if you are running the script already like this, and you start a program in admin mode, you will notice that the script will automatically know that something was run as admin, a new program was run as admin, and it will highlight it for you. So in case that you are actually testing something and you want to run the program as admin, a very good way to check is just keep the tool open, run it, and see if it shows up. The reason why we say this is because we had this issue as well, that we were uh, right-clicking on an icon, trying to run it as admin, and it was not being run as admin. It, well, we didn't know that. It, it, we didn't know. We actually clicked on run as admin, and we assumed that it was running as administrator, and nothing was working. And you were asking me, hold on, but... If you're an admin, shouldn't not be able to do this and that? And I was like, yeah, but I run it as administrator. But the fact was that it was not being run as admin. So this tool, yeah, for this tool, it will go ahead and show you if it was really running as administrator uh, or not. Yeah, so let's back up one step here. So just the whole running as administrator, it's a security thing that yes. Windows has to prevent, you know, and the, the example we were doing for a client was he was trying to do some day trading with a stream deck connecting to his day trading software. And the day trading software was, it, it was forcibly being run as an admin. It's the only way it'll work, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, so they built that as a security thing to make sure that like, you know, someone can't easily come in and mess with this. Um, so when a tool is run, any programs run as an admin, you have to elevate your script. There's a couple different ways to do it, but the way we're offering it, it's not the most secure, but hey, you're in charge of your computer, right? So exactly. So you want to launch your script as an admin. You want to show in the tool, Isaiah? Yes, to... sir. And so, by the way, comment below if you've ever had a program where you've tried to interact with it and you couldn't either send a mouse click to it, you couldn't send a tab, you couldn't send keystrokes <laughs> with a hot string or hot key, right? We'd love to hear to see if there's any, you know, what, what are... Because the problem is we don't know. This is why we wrote this tool. 
Yeah. Acting, if it's run as an admin, is really not easy. It's it's not something you don't just right click and go, oh, look, it's run as admin. That's not maybe, a maybe somebody might chime in as well and say, hey, this right. is the way how I do it. This is the way how I figure it out. But basically, what we did is just a tool that does it very quickly for you. Now, here on the tool, uh, you will have this button that says get force admin code, and it will copy this text to your clipboard. That's all. Now, what it does is it requires this version of AutoHotKey at least because Which this is, is a really very old. old. Yeah, it is a really old. So any any newer version, any requirement that you use above that is going to be fine. But basically, this particular variable already tells if it is admin or not. But this line here, let me make it a little bit bigger. This particular verb right here tells AutoHotKey to run the script again but as an administrator, that's what it's doing. And as soon as it opens the script as administrator, it just exits the current script, which is not admin, right? So, so the first one that is running is not admin. It runs a version, which is in admin mode, and then it exits. That's the whole thing this code does. And it, the, the, the tool just simply goes ahead and gives you a very quick way to get that code just by clicking that, and you will have it on your Clipboard. So you would take that code, put it in at anywhere in your script, right? That's well, at the, the beginning of it, I think. I think at the beginning because if you put it after a return or if you put it in a function, it's only going to yeah. yeah okay. You can put it in, in. For example, if you have a, a GUI with a menu, you can say one of the menu options run as admin. You can do that, but in general. Uh, I usually put it at the beginning of the script. It's the we first do. thing that happens. Yeah, so it's just to make sure that it's run as admin. One Another thing that we, we really need to mention here is if your script that you just did this to launches any other scripts, they will inherit that admin level, right? So yes, you have to keep that in mind. If, that, um, if you create a script that is admin, you have to be careful with when launching other programs because they also run with elevated privileges. That's yeah, and then suddenly everything you're doing is an admin level, which <laughs> as long as you're just using it on your computer, it's probably okay. But we just want to make sure you understand that. So um, thanks for this. And please, you know, like and subscribe. And comment below. It really helps us out. Um, thank you so much. And go grab that script. And tell us <laughs> also if you had problems with it or if it actually solved the, the tricky part that you were trying to do. Okay.